You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. I hope you uh, are enjoying your week. I hope you're being good to yourself. Ryan, have you been good to yourself? I have been good to myself. Good. Are you this doing anything for yourself this week? Are you, you exercising? You do doing? anything? Anything good yeah. happen to you? Softball, I hit four for four. Four for four. <sighs> That uh, means four at bats, folks. Four hits. I played goalie in my soccer league, so these things are back, which is nice. Hey, this is nice. You're getting a, you're getting outside. I know it's crazy. I like that. I hope you guys are getting outside. And thank you for tuning in. If you're here for Bobby Lee, I, I I really hope Bobby and I are good friends, and I hope you'll stick around and support the podcast and subscribe. Um, you could follow us on our handles, Ryan. Uh, at inside of you pod on twitter at inside of you podcast on instagram and facebook that's correct and uh, if you love uh, i want to shout out to my patrons who support the podcast in many ways and we'll get right back right into this uh, podcast in a, in a second but if you want to join patreon it's a wonderful way to support the podcast in other ways help us out go to patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n patreon.com slash inside of you also this coming weekend um, I will be in Denver, Colorado at the Denver Con for uh, Halloween for the 30th and 31st with Tom Welling. So get your tickets. Come see us for Halloween. We are taking our Halloween on the road to Denver. And also I'll be at the LA um, Comic Con on December 4th and 5th right here in Los Angeles. Also, if you want to buy anything at the Inside of You online store, do so. We've got tons of great stuff. Also Lex Luthor and Smallville shit. We've got, uh, if you go to sunspin.com, you could uh, buy some band merch. As you know, Stephen Amell loves our hats, our sunspin hats. We're almost out of those hats, but uh, you can get beanies and a bunch of other stuff as well. But uh, I just want to say thank you for all, all of you for tuning in. Bobby Lee and I, and I have been friends for a long time. He always gets open and deep and personal, and he's uh, charming as hell. I, I really enjoy this podcast. I always love him having love having him on. I like to give him shit. He gives me more shit. Um, so, without further ado, let's uh, get inside of Bobby Lee. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Are you sure you didn't paint your house? It feels like I a added different... this wall here, and I, you know, don't, you know, the wood. No, but even when I go walk into the living room, it's like a different vibe. Is it a good vibe? You seem like it's not. No, it's. Uh, I always had a perception of your house in my mind what, that, what that perception? I hated it. What, oh God! Like it's it's like a, uh, it's something that Jim Henson would live in or whatever. <laughs> You know what I mean? That the yeah, you, like, well, you create Muppet like, creator. you know what I mean? Felt, you know, puppets. Why like, do you think that is? Why do you think it's I got have like all a, these because things? Of the, because of the, no, it's the decor. Like it's the a museum. Wood, the wood. It just feels like some old timey 1970s guy. But then when I walked in at this time, it was like, um, it felt fun. Like uh, oh. Moriarty's house, you know? Fun. Well, not Moriarty's house wouldn't be fun. It would be um, he's up to no good, but it oh, just has great. this like nineteen eighteen hundreds. Eighteen hundreds now we're back. We're, 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 <laughs> yeah, we've yeah. gone further. Let's go further back. Yeah, eighteen hundreds guy who like is trying to foil, you know, Sherlock Holmes. So I don't know whether you like it, the house or not. I like that because I like movies that have that vibe to it. Kind of a not noir, but kind of an old school feel. I wouldn't live here. Okay. Well, I've been to your house. I mean, I like your house. Which one? The new one. Okay. I've been there. Did you forget I was there? Mm hmm You did. I don't I don't get to talk to you very much. You're you're I becoming, don't even know how this happened you're, because okay, well, go ahead. Well, I think you texted me a couple of weeks ago about, hey, can you get Polly Shore? Yeah, I thought he'd be fun to guest. Okay. But I felt threatened by it. You did. So then I was just like, what about me? But you're always welcome on the show. This is like your third time on the show. I, You're always welcome. Now, I, I, I used to be one of your favorites on Tiger Belly. I haven't been on Tiger Belly in years. I know I'm not as famous as a lot of the people you get on there. <sighs> That's crazy to think that. Is it crazy? It's not the truth. Is it even. insecure? It's not even the truth. Because I remember auditioning for Smallville mm. and not even getting anywhere near... Who did you audition for in Smallville? This old lady. I don't know what a part was, but it was an old white lady 
that was casting it. Oh, I thought you auditioned for an old white no, lady. No, 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 no. It's like, wow, diverse. But my point is, is that, and then when the show came out, I was a kid then, but when the show came out, I was like, oh, these are real stars. That's all. That, listen. You have got. Look at your, the hawk. You call Ryan the. It's the how, eagle. How, what, what do our eagles sound like? Eagle face. How do they just sound? I think that's it. Ryan, how do you feel about being known as Eagle Face to Bobby? I like it. It's nice to be remembered. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's the first thing he said. He goes, "I do remember he called me Eagle Face yeah. last time." Yeah, it's just the profile's nice. Back to the uh, talk about guests and stuff. Sorry, because I, I watched an interview with you and you with who it was with just you and george and kalila from tiger belly okay and it was a clip where you talked about how you do ask guests to come on the show and you do text them but you hate the rejection of them not answering you like ronda rousey you text her to say i love you on my podcast and she never responded yeah i got her the big one for me now is ike baron holtz i don't know who that is who is that uh the comedy guy he was on Mindy Project? Okay. Yeah. You asked him? Well, I worked with Ike for six years on Mad TV, <sighs> right? And yeah. him and I traveled together, and we were bestie, very close. And then when Mad got canceled, you know, he had a pretty good, really good career, you know, really good career. And um, I've asked him maybe four times in my life, and every time it's some excuse. It's just fine. I believe the excuses, but I can no longer ask again. Does he do other podcasts? No, but that's not the point. Jordan Peele, who was on, I was on Mad TV with. Yeah, he did it. He did it, and he... This is after Get Out. So, I met, mind you, he was really busy. You know, and he still did it. Right. And, so, I, you know, I, I understand that, that I love Ike, and I'll, or, or I'll forever love him from the bottom of my heart. But um, it upset I you. wouldn't save him if... A snake bit him. <laughs> you wouldn't suck that venom. I don't out? think I would. Right at this point, until he does it, I I embarrass myself quite frequently. I ask a lot of guests. I need guests every week to be on the show, and you want people to uh, watch the show, listen, follow, and so I have to go after them because I don't really have anybody that helps me for the most part, and so I get dealt with rejection constantly. But you, when you do land, though, you get good ones. You get you get guests I can't get. All right, I could help you get them. I don't want them. I want Jordan Peele. No. He wouldn't do it? No. Why not? I can get you Pauly Shore. Let's start there. He lives in Vegas. I asked you. I know, you I know, I know he does. But when he's in town next, you'll see what happens. So what is this rejection? You don't like being rejected by your friends, especially when you reach out to them? I think the problem is um, they... A lot of my friends are have acting careers, and it's not acting, right? So it's like they don't – also, they're not privy to the kind of audience that I have, and um, it would be a positive thing for their life, I think, yeah. if they did it. Um, so they think that it's um, – also, I have to also say that I've changed. So it's like people that I met back 25 years ago or 20 years ago – think that i'm gonna like make them eat my pubes or something <laughs> right because they think that i'm the, that that the guy. old bobby lee yeah and it's like no i i i've changed like i'm not as wild and you're I, still wild yeah but i'm pretty tame though i saw an interview on q13 seattle where you're about to do a show at the parlor and the interview you just pr pretty much kept moving to him as close as possible sitting on his lap you kissed him and uh Unless that was 20 years ago. I don't think it was. Probably 10 years ago. And, and also, um, <laughs> I have to say, uh, I don't remember that. Okay. It is something that I probably would do. Right. But you have to understand those morning shows are so god have you, You've done them. Oh, yeah. They're so god You have awful, to give them right, something. That I have to do something to make it weird and to, to make it awkward. Because I don't, I'm not in there. I'm not like some of these comics like Carlos Mencia or whatever. That have just joke, 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 and do his bits. Stolen joke, 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 oh, joke. Well, was, no, I'm kidding. Funny. That's a no, funny joke. No, though. thanks. Um, but anyway, let's move on. You don't want to talk about that? I don't. I want. I, I do want to talk about um, how I've changed, though. 
And I think it's, Tell me. it's because I'm, I'm almost 50. Yeah, you're turning 50 next year. No, in a couple of weeks. Okay. And Are you having a party? I was going to have one. Right. But um, I know that you had a birthday dinner to invite me. But my point is, is that... Um, I had 15 people come over. And you, you're too busy for me. You're too, you're too I, you know famous what, you know, now. You, you you're know, famous now. If you threw out a line, that would have been suffice. You would come. If you threw out a line, who knows? I will always throw out a line for now when I didn't want to bother you. I don't think that's what it was. I don't think that I was it's in your true. mind. I think you would have had a boring time. You wouldn't know a lot of people and you feel uncomfortable and I saved you. Well, I know you're a board game kind of like, let's no, do didn't... charades kind of guy. I've been to your parties. Well, we can't have those parties nowadays. I know, but you're one of those guys that let's get together and play. Um, I don't comes. know. Let me think of a, a make up a, a game. You were thinking risk. Kamachanzi or whatever. Kamachanzi. We put the blocks on the thing and then we try to pull it. I don't know what it is, but my point is, is that <laughs> you're that type of guy. It's it's like old timey 1970s Jim Henson party. Moriarty. Moriarty party. So you don't enjoy me. You I don't mean, have... look at that. Yeah, there's masks and things. That's no, from but Smallville. what kind of mask is that? That's from Smallville. I wore that in an episode. I know, but I is tortured. that not a Jim Henson kind of a thing? I mean, there's some Jim Henson puppets up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. Is it weird? <laughs> It's it a, is maybe because you know i maybe it's a distraction yeah. the more distractions i have in the house the less i have to deal with me by the way that i, 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 you. I, I told I you, you. I, I, miss you. I, I miss you i miss you do you know i was i had i've had anxiety what's your problem <laughs> you have a vibe i have a vibe yeah, yeah you like his vibe no it's like almost like he's nervous or something he's not nervous i'm nervous no problem everything's fine, yeah, fine. <laughs> okay okay <laughs> No, he's like fidgeting and, you know. He's writing. What is he writing? He's about? writing notes. He's saying, cut this. This is boring. Yeah, all of this. You're going to call no, all this? No, this is great. No. Yeah. So you're turning 50. So you're not going to have a party. You're not going to do anything. I was going to have a big shindig. I was going to get a restaurant. I was going to invite as as many people as I could. But then Delta happened. Delta variant. Yeah, and it's just like, you know, we're still in it. There was many thoughts that I had, like, because I got vax and all that stuff that I was like, Oh, this is the new age, you know. This is, and it's like, no, we're still in it. It's terrible. So, can't you get some friends together, like me? No, I, I don't. I can't do it because of um, because of Kalila. What do you mean you can't do it because of your wife? She, no, she, she. I didn't realize you're married. I'm not married. It says online you were married. I know you're married. I know. You do know. That's good. You know that. Do you think we're married? I think you're married. I think you got married in 2016 and you really didn't tell people. We are married. Yeah. Inside of you is brought to you by Sonos. I freaking have talked about this. I love Sonos. Guys, I've had Sonos before they were a sponsor. I've had Sonos in my house for over 15 years. I love Sonos. I like to listen to a different song in each room of the house. I could put it on party mode and listen to the whole house full of music. It's just so easy. The sound is terrific. They've got this new speaker, Sonos Roam. Look at this, guys. Look how tiny this is. It weighs almost nothing. And you could just, like the title says, Roam. You could have it anywhere in the house. You could just bring it with you. Sonos Roam is the ultra-portable smart speaker that allows you to bring the Sonos experience everywhere you go. Roam weighs less than a pound. Its premium, durable design makes it perfect for the home and for on the go. When you're home, Roam connects to your Wi-Fi network and the rest of your Sonos system and then automatically pairs with your phone on Bluetooth when you're on the go for a seamless experience. Using automatic TruePlay tuning, Roam smartly adapts to your surroundings and whatever you're listening to and creates sound that's astonishingly detailed and perfectly balanced. That is correct, Ryan. Control Roam using the app, Apple AirPlay 2, or your voice with Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. With Sonos, you can start with one speaker and expand your system over time, like I have. I have one in every room, as I've talked about. All Sonos speakers connect over Wi-Fi, so you can group speakers in different rooms and play music throughout your home. You are not gonna regret this. You have to check out the new Sonos Roam. Uh, I love Sonos. Thank you, Sonos, for being a sponsor, and you guys need to check it out because it's an amazing, amazing device. Inside of You is brought to you by my good friends at BetterHelp. BetterHelp Online Therapy. This is working. I don't know how many people have come up to me, Ryan, at convention saying, I tried BetterHelp. It's really saving my life. It's really helping me. One of those people is helping is Ryan. It's helping me. It's a helpful service. And you got it's in the name, help. 
Help, better help. Better help. And you, did you get a new therapist? Uh, I did. Um, uh, yeah, just, uh, just recently. Right. Because, uh, Ryan had a therapist and so he wanted another therapist. And so that's what's happened. It's so easy. BetterHelp Online Therapy really has done a great job, and uh, I really appreciate having them on the sponsor as a sponsor. Uh, they're just so fitting. That's what we do here. We talk about a lot of things: depression, anxiety. Look, whether you're struggling with grief, relationships, or stress, or you're having trouble sleeping or meeting goals, online therapy uh, might be for you. BetterHelp is secure online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with a licensed professional therapist. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own accredited therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. And you don't have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. Therapists have a broad range of expertise, which may not be available in your area. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. It's really amazing and easy. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. So they make it easy and free to change therapist if you need, like Ryan. It's also more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. I'm telling you, offline therapy is so much more expensive coming from someone who has gone through a lot of therapy. I'm telling you, this is the way to go. It's easy. Visit betterhelp.com slash inside and join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Inside of You is sponsored by BetterHelp, and our listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash inside. That's betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. BetterHelp Online Therapy. Try it, folks. Inside of You is brought to you by GEICO. How do you banish high rates on car insurance? It's easy. You switch to Geico during geico Ween. <laughs> I love making that sound, by the way. You like that? Let me do it again. Right? Do it again. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Spooky. October is Geico's favorite time of year, and Geico has been working even harder to cast out high rates on car insurance and craft just the right coverage for you and your family. But here's the thing. You may not know about Geico, Ryan. They could also help you uncover more savings when you bundle the other things parked in your driveway, like your beloved motorcycle, boat, or even home away from home, your RV. Geico could even help you save on homeowners and renters insurance. So visit Geico.com today and you'll see firsthand that switching your insurance coverage doesn't have to be scary. The only thing that will haunt your nightmares is seeing just how much you could have saved if you had switched sooner. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Happy Geico Ween. Anyway, um, let's talk about us. Do you let's talk about us? And listen, let, let's talk about us. Okay, I, 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 I think I'm at a point right now that I want to talk about us. Okay, fine. We can talk, our, our it's, hey, our it's my interview, you know. Uh, I, I've been getting, I've been getting some anxiety lately there we and go. my thing is, is that I get overwhelmed by everything now, things mm. that I didn't normally get overwhelmed with. So every little thing gets me overwhelmed. Do you deal with this stuff? Do you deal with, are you overwhelmed by things? Because it seems like you used to be now the new Bobby, you've got so many new, sh so much new shit. You're doing so many new shows. I mean, I can name the fucking shows There's reservation dogs. Uh, what's the what's one episode? One episode, but what's the new, you have a development deal at CBS? It's almost over in two weeks. Okay, and you something else. <laughs> there's something else you did. You did a movie with uh, Eli Roth, uh, the that director comes out of next Hostel, summer, right? With Kate Blanchett. That comes out next summer. I mean, you got a lot of things going on here. I have but, two. I have two lines. Let's let, let's look at things in perspective. You don't have two lines. You they flew you overseas. I I know, but because of COVID though, this is what it would have been like if that movie was shot in LA, right? Shoot two days, thank you, and then you never see anybody again, right? Right. But the but with because of COVID, I was flown to Hungary, and because of their laws and and restrictions, right? The production was like basically is you have to stay here, and I go well. When am I shooting? They're like you're shooting um, this date, and then you're not going to shoot for another three and a half weeks. That's your next scene, so it's like. What do I do? Oh, you could just stay in the hotel. So I spent th um, about close to a month 
doing nothing in a in a hotel in Hungary. You had to be going out of your mind. Well, I know, but the problem there's 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 an actress named Janina Gavankar who in the movie she's like the, the my boss pretty much. So she kind of had the same days off as me. So you hung out with her. So I hung out with her, and then like at the Four Seasons there, right? There was you know there's like five or six productions. So there, it was fun to go to like the the restaurant and to see all the stars, because you would see like Oscar Isaac walk by, you know, with his plate of his omelet, you know what I mean? Or you would see John Krasinski or all these people. Did you talk to any of these people? No, but I would like do like a little smirk and look, and they would lock eyes, and I would go back into my like bagel. Did they recognize you at all? No, nobody no recognized it. you. No, it's funny because even in this movie, I had to like kind of tell people what I did. Like, you know, I'm in the movie, like, there was a couple of lunches where, well, you know, you know, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis, right? I've heard of her. Oh, God. But you know her? Yes. I don't know her personally. Oh, yeah. Well, she is a mensch. You love her. Well, I didn't know it, I would, but like, so the first day I went there, because you, you have to imagine like, you know, Kevin Hart, Jack Black, all these people are in it, right? This movie. I have two scenes. No one's going to give a shit about my character, Right. So when I was flying to Hungary, I'm like, I knew that I had a month off. So in my head, I'm like, you're just going to be by yourself. I don't know anybody. No one's going to want to hang out with you. Right? So you're already, I brought my PlayStation. I'll just play 15 hours of Warzone a day, whatever. <laughs> so when I went into my hotel room, beautiful hotel room, there was a letter on my bed. And it was written by Jamie Lee Curtis. Hmm. She goes, welcome to the show. Here's my number or whatever. Let's hang out. So the next day, she, she she texts me. She goes, downstairs, noon. I mean, yeah, noon, brunch or whatever. So I went down there. And she's in the movie. She's in the movie. Obviously. So I'm there with her. I met Penn Jillette from Penn & Teller. Right. Janina went. And then a week later, I shot a scene. And then a week later, I had another lunch with Kate Blanchett. Wait, Alone? No, with a bunch of people. Right. But it was like, these are two, three hour lunches because it was on a Saturday, whatever. And they were fun. You I'll had, never you see had fun. I think I'd be overwhelmed a yeah, little it was, bit. No, in the beginning, it's not. But then you realize that like, um, we're all, they were, you have to imagine that all these stars had come out of this pandemic. For many of them, this is their first job back. And so many of them, they've been, in, you know, locked up for over a year. So they're excited. So they're kind of like, they want to like bond. And, you know, even though like I'm pretty much like an open micer, you know what I mean? Like this is newbie. Some guy had really, you know, I've done a line here or two and things, but, but they treated me like I was part of the group. Part of the group. Yeah. So it felt cool. Now. It was magical actually. Who are you still for? Could you text right now, Jamie Lee Curtis? I do have her number, but I would never text her. Why don't you her. text her right now? No, 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 no. No, 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 I will not. Why don't you just say, hey, just so I'd say hi, great working with you, miss you. No, because it's, I don't want to be intrusive. The guy, I have so many numbers on my phone. Do you, you, you probably have these too. But you, you can get her on the podcast. Well, I was to see, here's my plan though. <laughs> my plan is to do it when the movie's about to come out. And then ask them all. I will ask them all then. You have Kate Blanchett's number? No. She was one I don't have. How is she in person, though? Well, she just. I don't like, want to get emotional, but I, I don't want to get emotional. Get emotional. But it's like. She's not only funny, but she's so sweet. Like, there was one moment where I was like, somebody had said a joke and everyone was kind of laughing at the table and she was literally right here. Right? Right. And she goes, the people are like, so imagine, she goes, <laughs> and she did this. That's me, right? She goes, <laughs> grabbed your shoulder and rubbed it. And rubbed it like that. And I go, <laughs> I go, <laughs> no, I didn't do that. But I went, <laughs> and, you know, I was like, cool. You know what I mean? Kate Blanchett touched you and yeah, you were part yeah. of the game. Right. And then like, um, but it was funny then like other people would come to the production that like were shooting later. So I, I got to hang out with Gina Gershon. And she's a, you know what I mean? One night we were at dinner and she goes, I'm just going to get drunk. And so I just sat there with with her and this other actor named Ben Davis. And they just started doing shots of this weird like Hungarian beverage, you know? 
you know, I don't drink. Right. Right. But for hours, just yapping it up. And then Josh Hartnett was on the next table of this restaurant and, and they came to the table. So it was a whole magic. And then you come back to LA and you're like, I'm a podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean like I'm, you know what I mean? I'm like you know what I mean that's what I am. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. Why do you think that? You've done tons of movies. You've done t- TV well, shows. You and you're I developing met on a movie. Things. We did a good one. Is it? But listen, <laughs> still the funniest line. You know the funniest line what in was the movie that? was when Miguel Nunez in the movie. Yeah, I was kidding, and I said I'm never doing another Jamie Kennedy movie, and he says he goes motherfucker Jamie Kennedy never doing another Jamie Kennedy movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was really funny. That, that was, was really the funny. best line. So when you're with Kate Blanchett all and all right. these people in Europe, yeah, in Hungary, Hungary, yeah, do you feel like Bobby Lee? Can you be yourself and be that different kind of funny, quirky no, guy, no, 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 or no. are you just quiet and you're not you, yourself? You end up hiding certain elements of your. I, I, I'm going to tell you a story that happened then. All right, and this is why I changed my behavior. Because so I forgot to tell you. So Jamie, at the first lunch we had, right? There's another actor named Cheyenne Jackson that's also in the movie. Right. Very talented guy. Handsome, can dance, sing, do it all, right? So Jamie goes, let's go by, let's walk to the river. So this is where I threw in my personality and it backfired. Oh, boy. So I go, so we were walking along this Naked. river. No. Oh, okay. Worse. Okay. So there's like eight of us. And along this river, along the side, are these bronze shoes stuck on the, you know what I mean, edge. You know, you know what part I mean? of the... the uh, there's a h- rose of it. Right. And I guess back during the Holocaust... Oh, God. Yeah, the Nazis came in, and they just lined up Jewish people, and they shot, killed them, and threw them into the river. It's not going to a good place already. Right. So um, Cheyenne Jackson goes, she, he sees little shoes, right? And everyone kind of gathers around the little shoes. And he goes, oh, my God, a little boy. And people are, like, emotional. So I go, it could have been a midget. <laughs> Nobody laughed. No, not only, it worse. The all collectively turned around and walked away so i'm now just with by the shoes you're ostracized so my, head, no, my head's down like this. it's the first day it's the first fucking day dude so i'm not my head is down looking at the shoes and just in my head you know you go through the thing what did like, i do did they really- why did you do that this is not a bunch of comedians i mean this is your, your gut is wrong you, you cannot do that again right so th- the whole trip, there were so many th- instances where I wanted to fucking throw out a banger, right? And I just <laughs> went, the- my filter went, no, stop, you know? So after that, you didn't do no, any of those? No, so I, I had to hide an aspect of my fucking personality. Did you ever think of saying sorry about the major joke? No, I never even brought it up. I pretended as if it never happened. Oh, God. I know, it was terrible. And then... In fact, I think Cheyenne Jackson, right? I think he he was very nice, right? But I could tell that it maybe it was in my own head, but like because I said that joke, he couldn't get that too close to me. But then like when I first when he was there in my first scene and I did well, then after that it, it kind of resolved itself. I right. Think, How, who did you talking. act with? Did you act with Kate Blanchett? No, no, no. I had one scene with her, but it was it was almost I get I get um, tased, right? Right. So, and then I fall on my back. And then Ke- Kate Blanchett and Kevin Hart have a scene over my body. And you have to just lie there for And I'm laying there. So I guess I that's a scene. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You're the tased guy. I'm the tased guy. Did Were you astonished by Kate's acting? Amazed. I'm just amazed by like just sitting there. Like there was one scene where... Um, Gina Gershon had a big monologue kind of thing to say, and just and I'm reverse. I have no line, but I'm in the scene, and I'm just just dancing in there and watching it. You know, because it's like, you know, the shows that I do, which I I love the shows I do. I've done I've been on sitcoms, and I've been on um. Sometimes I do Magnum PI, some of these shows, and it's like the energy and the I think the 
the level is completely different, you know? It's like, you know, when you do TV and you know this, is you feel like there's a sense of urgency because it's like, they have to, they, yeah, they have to move on. You know what I mean? It's like, you do a couple of takes, they're like, that's fine, let's just move on. You know, even though like, I want a different, another take. But with, with you know, films, as you know, as well, is, is that they let things breathe. There's more time. A lot like. more shooting. There's more shooting, more angles, more, you know, there's more discussions about the scene, whereas like the director will go, yeah, it's just the tone and the energy. I think, you know what I mean, Bobby, just slow it down. Whatever it might be, you know what I mean? It's like a different vibe, you know? So it's like, you just want to, you just want to learn how to do all of it, I guess. Did you feel like you wanted to be, go, go ahead, take a drink of your Red Bull. You can do that. You've eyed it. How many Red Bulls is that for you today? Just every night in my head, I hear, it could have been a midget. <laughs> like every night I go to bed and I just that just kind of rings in my head. Maybe one day. It, it echoes. It could have been a midget. midget could have been a midget. 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 It could be a yeah, rap maybe, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could have been a rap song. Yeah, and first of all, you're not even saying, you're not even supposed to, I should have said a little person because you're yeah. not even allowed to even say midget anymore. I was going to say, when you're on a set with these folks, do you still get, because I know you used to be where yeah. you're always thinking of family. You're always thinking of like, fuck, I'm going to get fired. I'm going to get this. They're going to hate me. Do you not do that anymore? Do you, you say me like, specifically? Yeah. Do you think you're more confident now with just your acting I'm, and your ability? Or do you get overwhelmed? No, 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 no. It's different. It's different. How is it different? And what did you do to make it different? <sighs> I, I've never wanted to talk about this, but um, I guess I will. It's, it's podcasting. So, you know, before when I would be in things like years ago, I did a show called Animal Practice. I didn't have a podcast. And, and, and at the time, my stand-up, I wasn't making a lot of money on the road. So everything relied on, you know, let's, I have to become a series regular. It's got to run for seven years so then I can make, you know, my forever money, right? Mm -hmm. But now it's like acting is not, the forefront of the thing it's like i um if i get fired fine right you and really it, think that no but also secondly <laughs> no not but that that's there right but there's a second element to it which is also i've done so many things i make him to realization that i've done 10 movies i've been a series regular on three shows but i've done six pilots right i've done so many guest stars right i've done on every and and it's like i understand how it all works and i also understand that i'm good wow that's an accomplishment like I, there's I, I i can sincerely say that <clears throat> there's no one that can do it the way i do it right and i know that i can kill it in a different way than another actor can not that it's better or worse i just know that when like when because i mean when eli hired me eli was it wasn't because i mean i auditioned but eli was like no i saw you on something else and that sprung up you know what i mean that bobby would be perfect for this role right so it's like oh if he saw me in something else that means that he thought it was good right, right. so then you know you kind of think you know and the first scene was with Kevin Hart. And I remember it was one of those scenes where they had these gigantic green screens. You're in the desert, right? And there's like these machines. It's a big sci-fi movie, right? There's like hundreds of extras with guns and, you know what I mean? And so it's like it's so many extras. What's it called? The movie's called Borderlands. It's based on a video game. So I remember walking from the tent to this thing, and I just remember because I saw Rose Namajunas do this. She said, um, "I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best." And when she right before her, she delivered the lines. No, Rose Namajunas is a fighter. Okay. And I just said to myself, "I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best." You're you're gonna kill it. You're gonna kill it. You're gonna kill it. Like this mantra. Positive reinforcement. Oh yeah. And when I walked on set, I killed it. Like I, I like Eli's like, ah, we don't even have to do another. Let's just do another one for fun. Just like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, and it was like I, you know, I had like ten lines in this thing. I had to walk around and grab things, and you know, I tied up Kevin Hart. You know what I mean? So I'm like kind of torturing him, I guess. 
And I'm just kind of like doing this little tiny speech, right? Not huge. I'm not going to win me any awards, but it's just like, I know how, how to do it and I did it. So you think because of the podcast success and the millions of dollars you're making No, now, it's not the money. It's what it is, is um, when I go on the road and I see Tiger Belly fans, or like, cause I'm in New York shooting something right now too. And I, and I'm, I, and I, I'm, I'm on the street in Brooklyn, right? On my day off. And people coming up to me going, it's a different thing than Mad TV. It's like, they know me. You know, they'll walk up and they'll go, they'll sit down and we'll talk. And it's just a different. Is it, you, maybe you feel like you belong? Is what you're saying? Like, like you, like. No, I feel like I have a family. You yeah, mean, I have you a, do. I have a family of people. I, 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 don't, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I, obviously, I, I, I go online and I know all the hate. Do there are people that really hate me. Really? Oh, yeah. Like, they can't stand my laugh. You know what I mean? They think that I'm gross or whatever it might be, right? But, and you read all that. Oh, yeah. Not, 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 I try not to, but sometimes, you know, you want to read, um, you try to fish for something, a compliment. Do you fight back? No. You don't respond? No. I bet you did in the past. No. Never. You never once said, fuck you, you know, don't watch if you don't like me. No. Because what does it matter? You know, Mitzi once told me, Mitzi, so they know is Mitzi uh, Shore. Mitzi Shore, who ran you know, the comedy club. Me and the guy years. named Freddie Soda, we used to drive her around back in the '90s, and she she has a plaque on her. She used to have a plaque on her desk that said, "It is it is a sin to support mediocrity." So we talked about that, and she goes, um, "You can't walk up to somebody that ha- doesn't have talent and say that they have talent." That's the worst thing you can do. And she goes, um, here's another word of advice. She goes, do you know what makes a true star? And I go, what? Because I was a kid. And she goes, half the people have to love you, but simultaneously, the other half have to hate you. Just as long as they're talking, baby. Wow, and that sunk the hell in, isn't it? Right, so so the negative stuff? It's still good. It's still real good. How many people listen to Tiger Belly? I don't know. You, you should it, know that. I'm sure you I, don't. I, you, I'm going to be honest with you. It's okay. You could put the glasses on Jason Voorhees. Don't make, let me forget these. Okay. I have to be honest with you. Okay, you're going in close. I know. You're still good. You still got me? Yeah. Number one. Go fuck yourself. Okay. I'm kidding. I don't know. That wasn't even a thing. (laughs) And number two. (laughs) The eagle has landed. Okay. So number one, right. I literally don't know how much money any of my pod. I have two podcasts. Bad friends. Generate. Generate. Right. right? You don't have any idea how much they generate. Ask Andrew. I don't. You have to be a businessman. No, I don't have nothing. I don't know any of it. I don't know any of it. Does Kalila? She does. Okay. Uh, Number two. I don't know how any of it works. I don't know how to turn it on. I don't know how to, how it gets on the thing. I don't know. That sounds like me. Yeah, I don't know how, <laughs> how any of it works. Right. I don't know who, how they get sponsors. I don't know how you make merchandise. I don't know what it generates. I don't know any of the details. This is what I do now is I'll be upstairs and Kalila will be like, all right, we're ready. I'll go down. I'll put these things on. I'll do it. And I walk, and I'll do some ads, and then I'll walk back upstairs. With Andrew, he's there thirty minutes before me. I show up, everything's on. Andrew I do Santino, it. bad friend. Yeah, Andrew Santino, I do it, and I leave. And then what happens is, I told him what he does is he'll send the money to my accountant, right? And my accountant oversees it all. And I don't, I don't talk. To, I haven't, I literally haven't talked to my accountant in a year. Do you think this is good? Yeah. Why is it good? Uh, as someone who's making I, you, money, who came from poverty, who came from sleeping on Pauly Shore's couch. I know. My point, uh, I, I'll t- because it's like, if I live in a world where everyone's embezzling and people are stealing from me and all that stuff, I, I already know just I won't be able to function. And it's like, it makes, it will create all this unhappiness, right? So there's a degree of trust that goes on, right? So 
my manager who I've been around for that that been this has been my manager for 25 years. She got me her and my accountant are very close, right? They've known each other since the 70s or whatever. So it's like, you know, I just there's a level of trust there, you know. Do you think it helps you being that you're just focusing on what you're doing and not worrying about the money and the business and the technical shit? You think that is what helps you? Yeah. But it's also I know when there's danger. So it's like years ago before Tiger Belly, I had my same accountant. And there was one point where I was spending so much money on Clash of Clans. What? Clash of Clans. I don't know what that is. You know what that is, Ryan? Yeah, a phone game. It's a phone game. Yeah. Okay. I had spent $10,000 buying troops for Clash of Clans. I don't play it. That's why I might stop playing it. Okay, good. But in like two months, I had racked up 10000 because I wanted to build the fortress. And you have to pay, you know what I mean, online. Right. So it's like- $10,000. Right. And then my accountant go, called me and goes, whatever that is, Clash of Clans, you delete it right now. You don't have the money. You're, you're running out of money. We can't pay this, this, and this, and this. There was a time where I- How many years ago was this? This is eight years ago. Right, He's right. like, or whenever Clash of Clans, seven years ago. He's like, done. It's over. No more cash. So I deleted it. Right? So it's like, I know when there's danger- Clash of what? Clans? You spent $10,000 on a phone app. Yeah. Inside of you is brought to you by Monk Pack. Healthy snacks have a bad reputation. And let's be honest, most don't taste very good. They don't fill you up and they certainly don't satisfy your cravings. This episode is sponsored by Monk Pack, who makes snacks that taste like our favorite sugary treats, but with one gram of sugar or less. Monk Pack Keto Granola Bars contain just one gram of sugar, two to three grams of net carbs, and they're only 140 calories. They're gluten-free, grain-free, plant-based, and non-GMO with no soy, trans fat, sugar alcohols, or high-intensity sweeteners. While they're great for anyone following a keto lifestyle, you absolutely do not have to be keto to love these. They are the perfect snack for anyone who's trying to eat better or cut back on sugar and carbs without sacrificing taste. I love granola. I love the Monk Pack granola. Uh, It's delicious. It's what I'm uh, into, and uh, great taste. Monk Pack Keto Granola Bars have a soft and chewy texture and come in delicious flavors like coconut cocoa chip, peanut butter, and blueberry almond vanilla. You know, hey, these these are great for when you're on the go. You know, we want to eat healthier. We're, everyone's always talking about eating healthier, doing things that are have less calories, um, a little more nutritional value. This is good for me. I love granola, um, and uh, it's it's quick and easy. And when you're on the go, I'm I'm always running out of the house. I just grab something and go. I don't have to make a meal. I don't have to go to fast food. Um, so it's really saved me. They're perfect for a quick breakfast, a snack between Zoom calls, or a guilt-free dessert. They taste incredible, and you can't beat the low-sugar nutrition they provide. And by shopping online, you can avoid another trip to the grocery store by getting Monk Pack delivered right to your door. Try it for yourself and see. And we have a special deal for our listeners. Get 20% off your first purchase of any Monk Pack product by visiting MonkPack.com and entering our code IOU at checkout. And Monk Pack is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, they'll exchange the product or refund your money, whichever you prefer. So to get started, folks, just go to MonkPack, M-U-N-K-P-A-C-K.com and select any product then enter the code IOU at checkout to save 20% off your purchase. Monk Pack, delicious, nutritious food you can count on. And we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Inside of you is brought to you by M1 Finance. Look up in the sky. It's the finance super app. Invest with powerful tools and unmatched automation. Borrow with some of the lowest rates or spend your hard-earned cash from their secure digital checking account. M1 Finance does it all. All with a few taps in their sleek modern app. It's no wonder money, Investopedia, and Yahoo Finance are raving about this app or that hundreds of thousands of investors have trusted over $5 billion in assets on the platform. They say you shouldn't always go with the flow. But this tidal wave of cash and savvy financiers might be on to something. Plus, get a $30 bonus to your M1 Invest account when you get approved and fund it 
with $1,000 within your first 14 days. Go to m1finance.com slash inside of you to get started. That's M as in Michael, the number one finance.com M one finance.com investing involves risk, including the risk of loss borrowing on margin can add to these risks. Rates may vary terms and conditions apply. Hey, when you're doing bad friends with Andrew Santino, do you guys ever start doing it and go, this sucks. Let's redo it. Last Sunday, we did one for an hour and a half. And we, at the end of, somebody said, I think I said, at the end, I go, yeah, this is unairable. And he goes, what? It's unairable. He goes, I know. I go, what's wrong? He's like, I'm tired. I'm tired too. We're not connecting. All that stuff, that hour and a half was a waste. He goes, what do you want to do? Let's meet tomorrow. So Monday we met. It was better? Not I. They said it was better. I didn't think it was better, but um, it happens all the time. Andrew and I have podcasts that we can never air, or or we will no longer have careers. You have an episode. We have one episode that's in a vault, where we went. You know, because we had one of those days where it was like it's not connecting. I go, why don't we just experiment and let's just just do one where we can say whatever we want, just anything, just to be anything to provoke. So we did one where we could say anything, right? Racist things, you know, sexual things, and things that will get us canceled. And we had the best podcast we could ever do. Because it was just raw. It was so funny where I would have to grab the so- my side and fall to the ground and go, stop, stop, stop. We got to stop. I'm going to die laughing. Like it was so. Aren't fucking... you afraid that somebody will get that and air it? How? We it's in a vault, like I said. You took the tapes or the disc. Or yeah, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> it's it's like um, it was so freeing. You know, I wish in in many ways the world was like that. It's I... kind of a shame that you can't kind of say what you want. I mean, you know, you got to be a little sensitive. But nowadays, it's like uh, you know. I'm not going to mention any names because then I'll get lambasted. But like, you know, one guy said something 10 years ago and he just lost his job. That's like people don't evolve anymore. People say stupid shit. If you heard half the shit I say, I just don't know if we're going to ever, I think it's going to get worse and worse or it will get, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, it's here. I mean, I'll throw my two cents in. It's like, um, I've said a lot of things. I mean, first of all, I've d- I've done thousands of hours. I don't even I can't even calculate it. Over the last twenty years of radio shows and podcasts and all the things I've said, and it's like it got to the point where I've realized that pretty much everything that I'm saying, I'm making up, right? Maybe there's like a little kernel of truth to it, but it's like embellishment. How to ex- extend it? You know what I mean? How do I make it exciting? And um, I would, there's a bunch of shit that I've he- I would hear from other friends and make it my own story. And there's just so many instances that are like that, that it's like, um, it's- You just don't say the right thing all the time. You would- it's, it, it, it's not even that. It's just like, I just feel like anything said in this domain, like in terms of radio or podcast, right? Especially when it's a comedy podcast and you're a comedian, right? That it should, like Shane Gillis, you know, that guy that said the Asian stuff, like he's going to do my podcast in a week or whatever. He got fired from SNL. That is the most atrocious thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. What did he say? He says, Jank, or I don't know what he might have said, right? But, you know, here's a guy, an actor who got cast on SNL. And then 10 years ago, I don't know how long ago it was, but he said some Asian slur, right, on a podcast and he gets fired from SNL is the most it's, it's so atrocious right that they would do that because podcasting and the, the things that we say here it's sacred and it's like entertainment if you don't like it don't listen to it it's fine i don't there's so many people that don't like me but there's a lot of people that do it's fine i get it right but it's like you know if you you know i i somebody said on a bad friends comment um yeah this show's lost it like you guys used to be so much funnier. It's like, well, then listen to something else. Right. 
You know what I mean? It's like, I, you know, we talk so long and not all of them are going to be bangers, man. But don't you think that doing a podcast, you can say whatever you want? Because you they can't. Can, but they, you can. They can't cancel your podcast. Who can cancel your podcast? But the problem is, is, is that when you say certain things on podcasts that aren't true and that are strictly for comedy, you can lose your job, not podcasting, but you can lose corporate jobs, right? And you can lose some friends. You know what I mean? You can lose, there's certain things that you can lose that I've seen happen, right? Yeah. Um, and that's all you're going to say about that. I mean, there's really not much to say about it. It's like, you know, I've said it a thousand times. Now, you know, something right. happened. It, it, it didn't bother me, but I was like, you, you, your dad passed away mm -hmm. and you came on the show and you were very emotional. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love how vulnerable you are. It was awesome. I appreciate it. But you also said I couldn't talk about that you went off the wagon, but then you said it on Theo Vaughn's show. So first I was a little upset that, oh. Probably, so probably, probably, probably at the time, probably at the time, <laughs> I didn't come out with it and I decided in a day or two afterwards that I would. You know, people change their minds and people, right, right. things shift. Don't take it personally. I, I don't. Yeah, so I did realize. I, mean, I did. I did. Why? I, did. I, I think you did. I didn't. I think you fucking did. No, I just said. I think you're no, like a little baby. No, right the now. first thing that came to me was yeah. Theo's got a way bigger show. It makes more sense. That's what came to me. But, but, you know what? You what? You, ding dong! <laughs> you fucking idiot! Let me just say this, okay? Theo and I are both in recovery, and we both struggled with addiction. Don't you think that that could be it? You fucking idiot! Uh, it is. It is. You're, Stop I'm, taking things so personally. You're a million percent. Let me ask you something. Yeah, yeah. I just don't like the way you snuck that in there. I apologize. Yeah. I just threw it in there. I didn't really mean anything by it. Put the glasses back on. This is ridiculous. No, no. Keep them off. You're, you're more honest when you are. I like when you're angry. <laughs> when you went off the wagon, when you went to rehab. Oh, my God. What the fuck, man? How hard was that? That's what I just heard there. Well, what, oh, oh, so you talked about it on Theo. Oh, okay, what, uh, what, what do you want to know, pal? I want to know how difficult it was for you to admit it to actually go and what you learned and how you got back on the wagon. It wasn't rehab, fuck tar tard. It wasn't. No, fuck tard. Listen. I thought it was. It wasn't By rehab, the way, shitbox. Hey, listeners, yeah. when he says fuck tard and all these things, yeah. it's, it's friendship. It's pure friendship. You don't need to think that he's being vulgar. And I'm mean. not going to angry. I'm, I'm just saying that I'm, I, I feel like if you were Larry King, I wouldn't be talking to you like this. I, I thought we have friend. We have, we have I, I'm friendship. not offended. I think some people might be offended at how you're talking to me. No, I don't think they would. I don't think they would <laughs> at, at all. But my point, I went to a place to deal with my trauma. Okay. In Arizona. Yes. It was a place that other people that I knew that I respected went through, right? And my father was so violent growing up, right, that I absorbed all of that suffering and, and all that shock and trauma, right, into my body. And it was pinned up there all these years, you know, and it's like I needed to a way to deal with it and release it. And that's by doing that, I got sober again, uh -huh. right? But it sure. wasn't, I didn't go to the place to get sober. In fact, when I was flying there, Kalila flew there with me to Arizona and I looked at her and I said, you know, I'm not going to get sober, right? She's like, I know. And I go, how do you feel about that? And she goes, it sucks. And I go, I'm sorry. But by going to that place, I got sober. Because you released all this other shit. Yeah, I did EMDR. On I did like that. Certain EMDR, I did it. I had a breakthrough. Did you have a breakthrough? He's doing the Bobby Lee stare. Ego face, help me out. It's just let me finish. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's the first time I've interrupted you today. I've learned. Mm -hmm. I've become a better podcaster. I did that. I just was trying to I'm like. Kidding, I love you. I know. Go ahead. I, I did that for comedy purposes. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. Thank you. Um, so you 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 use it does work. It does work. Yeah. So um, I did EMDR on this one incident, right? Which seemed to like do a lot for me which is um, when I was like, I don't know, eight or nine years old, maybe younger. Um, I remember my mother waking me up. We were living in Minnesota. And 
she turned the lights on in the room. But my brother Steve and I slept in the same room. And um, she was crying, and she opened her mouth, and all I could see was blood. Yeah, are you hard? No, I'm upset. <laughs> Little, I had to take a deep breath. Oh, I thought you were getting an erection. <laughs> no, could you imagine? Yes, go on. Run. Go on, please. <laughs> yeah. Continue. And so, um, Jesus. My mom goes, in Korean, help me with the door to my brother. And we're kids. And she closes the door. And I could see, like, you know what it reminded me of is Shining. Remember when he cracks open the little crack in the door and he sticks his head through? Here's Johnny. Here's Johnny. That's what it felt like. So we're just sitting there, my mom and I, right? And, and, and just the door being, right? And we just knew that it was going to be bad when my dad walked in, right? It was going to be bad. Violence. And then um, he gets in and that's where my memory stops. I don't know what happened. But I remember the fear of being by that door with my brother and my mom trying to get my dad to not come in because he was going through a drunken rage, right? And um, we did EMDR on that specific um, experience. And it was, um, it relieved it. It kind of like, it kind of, like I know it happened, but the feeling in my body when I think about it, is gone, you know? Yeah. And um, they say that when you leave trauma in your body and it's not dealt with, that it could turn into diseases and it affects you physically. And I, and I know this from experience because the reason why I was in the fucking place in the first place was when my dad died for a month, I didn't eat or sleep for a whole month. I didn't know why. Every time I, I went on the road, I was in Portland, and I was with two openers, Chelsea Skidmore and Stephen Randolph, her husband. And we were at a sushi restaurant, and I hadn't eaten in days. And I go, I'm going to try to eat. I took a bite of some sushi, and I vomited it. Right? And I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I'm like, my dad dies, and now I can't eat or sleep. Right? So then... I, um, my friend Sosi ran into me and Sosi said, you look like shit. And I go, I know. And she was with, Kalala was there too. And she's like, you should see my therapist. So I went to a therapist. So I haven't eaten, slept. I'm smoking weed for 24 hours a day. Right. And I'm now in my, a therapist's office and we start talking about my dad and growing up and the violence that I grew up with and the weirdest fucking thing happened. I go, all right, well, thanks for doing the therapy. When I got in the car, it was in the places in Encino, the, the, the therapy from Encino to my house in um, studio city. I went to three different restaurants and I ate a meal. I could eat again. By just talking about just it. by talking about my dad and that experience therapy dude so in my head i was like oh there's a connection between how i was raised right and the experiences that i had to my physical body now right so then i decided to go away to go to a trauma institute a psycholo a psychological institute to deal with the stuff and i did emdr on this and that and i got sober through it and i came out a different guy you know and um that same wow. therapist that she, I still every Thursday, I have therapy with this woman. Every Thursday you meet. Oh yeah. And do you still talk about deep stuff, or do you think everything you've talked about is sort of you? No, I, you? we still talk about the past, but we also talk about. Um, that's another reason why I can show up on sets and stuff, and I have a different vibe about me. You know, it's like it's funny. It's like years ago, before, like I remember being like. Um, on animal practice and the Russo brothers were, were my showrunners, you know, they're huge directors now, right. but I remember like, you know, being around them and not talking to them. Like, it, like it was almost as if they give you notes and then it's like, I go back to my chair and I just read my script and there's no like connection, connection. Right. Right. But now it's like every job that I have, no matter what, like I'm, I'm doing a small part 
in Sex and the City. Stop saying small part. Just say doing a part. It's just three or four lines. All right. Well, you're doing a part. Well, a part. And um, you're right. I should stop doing yeah. that. And, you know, the show, you know, Michael, the showrunner, or if it's Eli Roth for the movie, or if it's like I did this reservation dog, Sterling, or any of these jobs I have, they're in my cell phone and we, we're friends and we talk and we goof around and I'm myself on set. Wow. And, you know what I mean? And it's a completely different experience. It's like, they're my friends. Producers, like a Magnum P.I., the producer of Magnum P.I., P.I. Gene, you're right, is one of my best friends. Like, we eat dinner. And that wasn't like you. No. I would not even, I don't, I, I would think to myself, they don't want to be bothered, right? You're just a hire, you know what I mean? You're just expendable or whatever. But I, it's like a completely different vibe. It's like you're there for a reason. You're worthy, right? Yeah, I believe that I belong there and I believe that I'm just as good or better than anyone else. That's a myth. Can I have your therapist? No. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'd I'm like to real, talk, no. I'd like to talk to her. I'd be real, her. no. Why not? All right. Why can't I just meet with her once? <laughs> I, want, I really, it, I mean, we, if, she, if you have such a breakthrough, because you are different in many ways, that, I, that I'd love to meet this woman. I'm I'd, different in a lot of ways, yeah. And it's like... Um, you know, I've had a tough month. I don't want to get into it, but um, a tough couple of months and um, just a lot of crying and a lot of like confusion. And um, but then it's also I have great things going on too. But it's like I don't know if if I wasn't in therapy that I would be able to deal with all the things that are going on in my life, the good and the bad. Well, what do you do to deal with them? Because like, listen, we're getting older. You're going to be 50. I'm going to be 50. Like, you know, I, I, I force myself to try and work out a couple times a week. I try to, what do you, do you, do you do any exercise? No. You Stop. Do, you don't do any exercise. Stop, man. You really don't. Whatever. During the pandemic. we're turning 50. Things are uh, starting to happen. If I die, I die. My point is that my, the, during the, <laughs> if I die, I die. But the, the pandi- but the pandemic, I did like 40 yoga sessions. Okay, that's a fucking a lot. A lot, right? And then um, I stopped doing them. Did it help you? It, I would loved it. Can I have your yoga teacher? She's great. Kara from Hawaii. She's the best. I mean, I she's my first one, but like she, Kalala goes to her. She's really great. And um, so you're doing things. You've I'm done lot, things. I'm doing a lot of things. Yeah, but um, and you're not overwhelmed. I feel great. You do have. Doesn't he seem different than the last time? Yeah. I mean, I except think, when he gets vulgar he, and yells at me. <laughs> no, I don't think you. Th- do you think that? Yeah. I don't care though. Okay. Well, I mean, if you think that, that's great. No, I, I do. Yeah. Tell me this story really quick before we wrap oh, up. We're done. Not done. We're close. Why? <laughs> we I just, I'm just starting going. <laughs> well, I want to hear this. No, story. I started getting going. What is an hour? How why, long is why, this? Right, well, why did you quit yoga first of all? Why did you st- quit? She, got out of, she went out of town, and then well, like, get I someone else. No, it's her. She's the one. Anyway, ask me the question. I just did. That's the question that you haven't written down. Well, no. The, the, oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Could you imagine? I knew what you were going to say. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, you told the story, and I just thought it was really funny. Go ahead. Toby Maguire, Leo DiCaprio, and Wahlberg were in a jacuzzi at, at Toby Maguire's house. This is just okay, house. Let's stop, 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 stop. Okay. It just made me laugh. I understand. I understand that. So, this is a, this is one of those uh, stories that I don't know if it exactly happened the way I said it did. Right. So you're taking it out of context. You're embellishing. You're having fun with it. Right. So this is basically. It's true. I know it. This Fair. is the real story. Okay. Okay. Late at night, I don't know what night it was, but my friend Mike called me and says, "I'm drunk." I'm on Vine. Okay. So when your friend's in a drunk, drunk, and it's two in the morning, your natural response is, I'm fucking sleeping. Like, I, you know, right. what the fuck? Like, I, I don't, we don't hang out. Like, he's not like a, you. If it was you, I would have maybe, you know? No, maybe. Maybe. And he go, I go, where are you? I'm on Vine and this and this. So I pick him up. This must have been 15 years ago. And I go, where's your car? And he goes, I don't remember. So we're just kind of driving on Vine, and then I go on like Beverly, and we kind of just do a U turn back around, you know. And then he goes, uh, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'll tell you. 
So he kind of goes this way, this way. So we're now going up in the hills. His car was at Toby Maguire's house. Okay. Right. And now this is where it this is where it gets um I don't know, which is he comes in, he goes back there, he goes, wait here. He comes back and he goes, the people are jacuzziing. I don't know. I think it was DiCaprio, but I don't know for certain. Maybe Wahlberg, I'm not for certain, but there were people And Toby, maybe you're not certain. I'm not certain, right? And he goes, do you want to go? And it's like, if it was regular people, I might have done it. Because at the time I was single, right? right? But like, I think the reason why I didn't was because there were stars there. And it's one of those things where it's like, now, knowing who I am now, 100% would have done it. I would have been able to develop relationships. Right. It would have been fun, right? But now it's like... Um, no, but go back to the rest of the story. What? You said they're all in a jacuzzi okay, so, so, okay, all, all right, so the joke was... So, again... Okay, it's no, not no, true. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Just let me finish, okay? Let me finish. I'm trying. Okay. So... The now, when you go through an experience like that, right? As a comic, you go, "How do I make it the story funnier?" Right? So it's like, "Oh, the bit is, you know, what I mean, what if they were get, like my, the reason why I didn't go in was my thinking was, what if you know they're gay, right? And they start, you know, what I mean, there's in like the a little, little gay orgy going on, right? And now who, being who I am at the level that I am, if Spider-Man's penis was in my face, right, I would have to suck it. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I would do it. Like in that scenario, I know where I was in the, the totem pole, whatever, whatever, and hierarchy, and I would have probably done it. That's why I didn't go in. But that's more of a joke than... Do you think you actually would have? Yes. Yeah. And you're not gay? No. But you would probably... Sucking somebody off and sucking somebody off doesn't necessarily mean that you're gay. Okay. Because it's like, I've sucked people off before. Okay. What? What? Don't come, okay. come again? I have. Okay. And um, when I was younger, when I was a kid. Yeah, right? yeah. We, we talked, we about, talked that. about that. Yeah, so, yeah, dark stuff. So, yeah. So it's not that dark. I don't care. Who I gives know. a shit? Yeah. And it's like, you know, there have been things. Th People thinking that I've been gay. People think I'm gay. It doesn't bother me. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. But either. it's like if I was in London at a club, right? And I'm like, you know what I mean? Dancing and all of a sudden like, you know, what's his name? Thor. Cillian Murphy. Oh, I was Killian Murphy. That. Yeah, okay. Gillian Murphy. Yeah. Killian Murphy. Good looking guy. And Tom Hardy. And I'm dancing too, right? And then they were like, two guys approach it. These two guys approach me. And I'm dancing, and I start walking backwards, right? Imagine walking backwards. All of a sudden, oh, shit, I'm through a door. Because I'm not looking at what's behind me, right? And they're still walking, right? They shut the door, and now you can't hear this music as because we're in a room, right? Yeah, right, right. And then all of a sudden, but I could still hear, and they pull their dicks, penises out, right? And I'd just be like, and I'll probably do it. You would? Yeah. I don't believe I, it. You don't think I would? Yeah, you wouldn't. Just now, you just now, in that look on your in your eyes, I was like, "Wow, he would." You like, you don't think I would? Yeah, because I don't think that if I if if it came out that I did, I think it would be I become famous, right? Sure. Comedian Bobby Lee blows Celia and Tom Hardy in some weird room at a club, all right? And then if, then I could do do a whole thing where I'm like, <laughs> didn't happen, right? <laughs> and then it's like. There's a video, maybe there's a video camera in the room and it just sees my style. Because I, I, do, I do the sack for no, you usually, you know, when the you sacks, when, no, like we usually want a girl blows you, you have to go, can you do the sack? Right. But I do it voluntarily in the, you know, I do it voluntarily. In I, the don't, I don't know what's funny this story or looking at Ryan's face while you're telling it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't yeah. know if yeah. it's uh, like, if it was him, I wouldn't do it. Right. He's never, not, he's not Tom Hardy. Yeah. I'd push him. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, dog? 
I mean, I might consider yeah, yeah, a handy, yeah. but I'm not sure yeah, about anyway. the oral. All right, shit talking with Bobby Lee. These are from my patrons, my lovable patrons. You have a lot of patrons. These are quick rapid fire for you. Michelle K wants to know, important two-part question. What's your secret to keeping your uh, mullet so luxurious looking day in and day out? I don't have a mullet anymore. Isn't that kind of a mullet? No, it's just long hair. Let me see it. Oh, wow, it's long. Yeah. You have great hair. Thanks, man. Maya P, what is a misconception people have about you? That I'm crazy. People think that I'm um, unhinged and crazy. Like I, I, I've been to comedy clubs for the first time. Like there'll be a comedy club that, like you know, that every comic has played, but for some reason I can't get a booking. And then, like ten years later, I finally get a weekend. And I'll show up, I'll do the weekend, and then the owner or the manager will walk into the green room. This happened a couple of times and go, wow, the reason why we didn't book you because we heard of these wild stories, but you're a really nice guy and, you know, what wow. a great comic. And it's like, I knew, you know what I mean? In my head, I'm like, there's these misconceptions that I'm like wild or- Unhinged. Unhinged, but it's like, I've never knocked on the show. I've been courteous to everybody. I tip well. I'm nice to the staff, you know. Raj, where were you when you took the greatest shit of your life? I have a feeling I know this answer. The greatest shit in my life? I guess that's what he wants to know. Raj, how dare you? I, 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 there's one notorious shit that I shit on the side of a guy's house with Kalila in the car screaming at me going what the fuck are you doing and then i went there's no fucking you know bathrooms around here right and i i shit on a guy's house good for you uh -huh. i shit in my mom's backyard once did you had to go real bad yeah and uh i got a the the you know the the stuff you have in the car in the glove compartment about the car i took the plastic bag out and i found some kleenex tissue and she wasn't home, and I just had a Stromboli at Pizza Chef, Pizza King in Indiana. And I jumped her fence because she wasn't home when she was supposed to be. I had to, and I took a human shit right in her backyard. And the first thing I did, she got home. I go, Mom, I just fucking took a shit in your backyard. She goes, I, I, I ate a Pizza King. I, I go, I, I ate a Pizza King Stromboli. I ate a Pizza King Stromboli, and I took a shit in your backyard. And she goes, I thought we were going out for dinner. <laughs> Uh, last question, Izzy C. My question is, if Bobby Lee and Rosie could be in any movie or TV series, duo, which duo would y'all be in? Oh, something that's already existed? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. I think we'd be really great together. I think you and I should do a movie where, um, I was thinking about this the other day. So when you see, you know how you see like these sci-fi movies where like a gigantic starship, right, will get attacked, Right. And and then you, you're always like looking at like whoever's the captain and people that are in, you know what I mean? The movie, the right. stars, right? Right. And but you never know what happens to the engineers, like to two loser guys that no one likes that are way back in the you know bowel I mean? of the ship. Yeah, the bowel of the ship. We're are we just you know what I mean? We're just the guys that screw this one thing, right? Right. And so like two guys, right, that are have that position, maybe a group of guys, right? Just complete losers. The ship had the starship has like ten thousand people on it, right? It gets attacked by this, you know, menace, alien force, right? And then you, we, without even the captain's order, we take we 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 go to the life pods or whatever those, you know, those pet pods, right? And you get out, and we get out. We're and the, the only ones alive. With, yeah, they get destroyed, and we end up on an, a planet, right? And it's a bunch of these losers, right? <laughs> kind of trying to survive that's a great idea yeah you know i mean and it's like um but somehow we have to i don't know how save the day or you know what i mean we become this you know anti-heroes or whatever i don't know what the thing is survivors yeah but i want we indirectly save the day by being accidentally saved the and day. it's our journey it's our it's our all these episodes would be about how these two are adapting and all these things in their friendship maybe one of the guys right stole something out of like the Maybe there's an artifact, right, that these alien people are trying to get. One of our loser friends finds this artifact, right? 
then we do take these life pods down, right? And then we end up on this thing, but it's like now this gigantic evil force is still looking for this orb or whatever, right? right? And, and Joe has it. Like, Joe, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Where'd you get that, Joe? Right? That's Ryan. No, I mean, I know, but no, the character's name know, is Joe, right? I'm just fucking with Joe, you. Joe, right? right? And right. then, you know, she was like, I just want to try make make a name for myself you know what i mean i was you know i was gonna go back to earth and sell it or whatever or whatever i might be whatever right and it's like now we have we're high you know i don't know but i it's like, like this idea. losers though they they're they they they're addicted to some alien drug you know what you do and is like, you like, start like the equivalent to you cocaine s- you start on the top of the ship like in the captain's quarters like uh, give me a you know maybe we see the captain you see the lieutenant you see the you right. think this story is about them yeah and then you go to the next level and it's the doctors and the, like the, the medical, whatever yeah, yeah. the medical and then you keep going down until you reach the bowels of the fucking no, ship. No, 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 like the eighth level is like for some reason animals right like pigs that they're like, like hey raised, Petey, yeah, Petey. Yeah, 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 like right and then there's a prison this is a show maybe there's a prison right but at the very bottom is these guys relegated they're like the guy the guys that either got demoted or right dude i love losers this. Uh, we might have to cut this just because i i think we should fucking i should we should pitch it no it's just no thank it's you. good you think so i really like it i think it's hilarious don't you yeah you get you have one guy who got demoted down to to the shit level and you have two guys who've been there forever yeah s level. s level maybe there was a guy that worked at like we have an artifact department somewhere and there's a guy that got demoted from the artifact department like the last level, like the bowels of the thing where we have to do manual labor, right? right? Are guys that got demoted from their positions, right? And we're now down there. And one of them stole the arb, orb or the artifact from the- Because he was mad he got fired from the- Yeah, he got, he the he got fired, right? So he has it. Then all of a sudden, we don't know, but like all of a sudden, you know what I mean? And, and like- I I'm hate the, to say that I like it. I hate to say why? it. That I, and then I'm like- I know. I, maybe I was the life pod, you know, whatever the escape pod. I worked in the escape pod. You right. Know what I mean? So you knew. So well, that's I know how, how to, we get out. No, but I, no, but maybe it's like you, you can't use the escape pods until like the captain unlocks it, right? Like, then people would a a wall all the time, right. right? But I, since I'm got demoted from there, I know the code, right? Escape pods. You now. know how it works. And right. then one guy's like, "We're not allowed to the captain, you're right?" And I, I'm like, "I, yeah, but I know the thing. You know, what I mean, the clearance or whatever number." So we all and go, the, and it only fits like three people. So we have to seat this. <laughs> right. We have to seatbelt two people together. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then one guy's trying to get in. He's like, "Hey guys," and you're like, "Sorry, Kurt, so, Kurt, yeah." And the door slams shut. Oh right, dies. but he no, Kurt, this big fat he guy, makes it somehow. He makes it somehow, but he get, he gets mad because. Later in the movie, we run into him in the desert. You fucks. You fucking asshole. You left me. No, no, we knew the ship was not going to, we knew the ship would make it. No, the ship did make it, you fuck. And then, and then when we're escaping from the, ship to, uh, the escape pods, the captain can even go, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Go, what the fuck? Somebody's accessing the, you know what I mean? Right. Escape pods when I didn't get the, cl- give, you know what I mean? Or whatever. But he's got so many things going on. And he maybe sees three pods escape. But then it's like the, the main ship explodes. They're dead, and now we're on this planet, and and it's like, um, and now the the bad guys are going. You know what I mean? Do you think people are still listening? No, we'll just cut that story. I, I, why? I, why? I don't know. I don't want us to cut the story. I love the story because I think it's actually something really no, funny. But, but no, because what happens is this: is Andrew and I made up a movie on our podcast called The Bottoms of Turtle Island. So this will still be ours because we said it on the podcast. Not only that, that, but somebody wrote a script based on Your us making them. And then a production company offered us to do the movie. Now, the money, like a movie that him and I made, I mean, made up, probably the budget's like three, four million dollars at least, right? Right. And he offered us two hundred fifty thousand dollars for oh, this yeah, movie, yeah, so yeah. It, we just couldn't do it logistically. Right. But and the script is okay. But like my point is, is that keep it in because what if somebody goes, let's do it? Somebody who's a really good fucking writer. Yeah, we need a good really writer. good like comedic a good writer. Like yeah, a yeah, really yeah. good because I'm going to rewrite that fucker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like a bunch of losers. Right? I love it. Yeah, yeah. But we have to be. It's. I want it to be more fear and loathing too, where it's like we're all also drug addicted and and just kind of like scoundrels like anti-heroes yeah yeah the world needs more anti-heroes wait does it 
Did, did you uh, did you enjoy today? It was easy. I, I would like I can do another hour, but I guess not. I get tired after an hour. Okay. I really enjoyed this. I don't want to wear out my welcome or your well, welcome. I'm not gonna be back for you another year, Bob. You'll come back on every year, though, won't you? Oh yeah, one every year. Really? Yeah. Will I ever be on Tiger Belly again? Yeah. You think? Okay. Let me. Can I just clear that up before we go? Well, I, I don't. No, before, before we go, I'm gonna clear it up. <laughs> before I go, I'm gonna clear it up. Okay. How many times have you done it? I think three. Okay. The most somebody's done it is four times. So three times on Tiger Belly. I know. Then why would you say so? Because I just fuck with like you. That. But three times is like I think time. your second or third. But it's been a long time. It's been like two it doesn't years. Matter. It's okay. like it's like you know I've had Dice on once, Tiffany Haddish on once. Shoot, I mean it's like good guests. You know what I mean? I've had Aquafina on once. You know, and it, you've been on three times. Yeah, that's true. So act, stop acting like a little bitch. Yeah, I'm a little bitch. This is a little bitch. What's up? Can I have a cigarette? For Thank you for allowing me to be inside of you, Bobby Lee. This has been a treat. I love you, buddy. Thanks yeah. for being here. What you see is what you get with Bobby. <laughs> but he's growing as a human being. You can tell. He's he's like, I don't do that anymore. I don't do this anymore. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more mature. I think that he fights that like I do. It's like we, we know that we're older now, so we have to act a certain way. But we like to. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah you know, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. No, Bobby is. Uh, yeah. There's no. He, yeah. There's no hidden agenda. There's no hidden agenda. Part. No. No, it's talk all about there. Rahab, it's all there. Talk about his dad's death. Talk about, um, talk about it all. So thank you, Bobby Lee, and thank you to all my top patrons. And again, if you like the podcast, pre- please, please <laughs> stick around. Stick around. Subscribe to the show. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch us on. You can listen on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, everywhere you get your podcast. Um, follow us. The handles. At Inside You Podcast on the Twitter, or sorry, on the Instagram and Facebook, and at Inside You Pod on the Twitter. Remember, uh, I'll be in Denver this weekend with Tom Welling on the 30th and 31st signing autographs and LA Comic Con on December 4th and 5th. Um, but come see us in Denver for sure this weekend. It's going to be a really great time. We're spending our Halloween with you. So, uh, and if you want to join the lovely Patreon, it's it's very easy to support the podcast. You just go to patreon.com slash inside of you. And uh, plenty of merch at the Inside of You store and all that stuff. So thanks for listening. And um, you know, it's been a uh, it's been a good week. I'm I'm, I'm I've been really busy, Ryan. A lot yeah, of traveling. Been, happen. I have my family coming in. You know, I got really upset with my mom because I'm flying her, and I'm flying her first class for her 75th, you know, wow. birthday. Wow. And the first thing she says is, "The flight's too early. I can't get up that early." <laughs> what do you mean you fucking can't get up that early? It's first class. You just get on the plane. And you. So, the, you know, I, I feel like, oh, she's going to really, really be excited about this. And, of course, it's just like, I can't get up. I have long-haul COVID. I'm like, this is three months from now is your flight. Do you think you can go to bed at fucking 9 p.m. and wake up at 4.30 or 5 in the morning? You know, people do that. It's very difficult for me. Oh, That's my mother. But uh, I love her, you know, I guess. I guess we're going to do. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, why don't we give a shout out to the top tier patrons uh, who really help make this podcast possible. And they give so much. And I just want to give a shout out to all of them. Nancy D, Leah S, Trisha, Sarah V, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Mama Lauren G, Nico, Jerry W, Robert B, Jer- Jason W, Apothean, Kristen. Uh, c- crook, not Kristen Crook. Kristen K. That's right. Amelia O, Allison L, Raj C, Joshua D, Emily S, CJP, Samantha M, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jen S, Jamal F, Janelle B, Carrie B, Tab of the 272, not to be confused with. Tab of the 273. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's correct. Tab of the 273. Kimberly. Um, the shit. Kimberly E, e correct. <laughs> Mike E, Eldon Supremo, 99 more, Ramira, Santiago M, Sarah F, Chad W, Liam P, Janine R, Maya D, Maya P, Maya P, of course, Maya P, Maddie S, Shannon D, Belinda N, Kevin V, James R, Chris H, Dave H, Spider Man, Chase, Sheila, G, Brad, uh, D, Ray, H, Tab of the T, Liliana A, Turd K, also known as. Uh, Turd Ferguson. Turd Ferguson. Michael S. Talia M. Betsy D. Hi, Betsy. Claire M. Laura L. Chad L. Rochelle. Nathan E. Marion. Meg K. Janelle P. Trav L. Dan N. Lorraine G. Carrie H. Veronica K. Big Stevie W. Kendall T. 
And uh, we're getting to the bottom of the list now. We're really the top of the list. Uh, Angel M, Rhiannon C, Corey K, Super Sam, Coleman G, Dev Nexon, Michelle A, Liz I, um, Jeremy C, Andy T, Cody R, Sebastian K, Gavinator, Ann H, David C, Elliot M, John B, Brandy D, Yavor, Yavor, Camille S, Bano, Bono, Bono, mm -hmm. The C, The C. Joey M, Willie F, Christina E, Adelaide N, Jeffrey M, Bridget A, Omar L, or Omar I, mm -hmm. Lana N, and Design OTG. Mm -hmm. Are you down with OTG? Design is down with OTG. Yeah, you know me. Yeah, you know me. Hey, I really appreciate you guys listening to the podcast, and um, you know I keep doing it, and um, hopefully you're enjoying it, and you'll spread the word. It really helps when you spread the word force people to listen to the podcast there's a lot of podcasts out there and we hope you spend your uh spend an hour with us that's all we're asking mm -hmm. right ryan yeah it's not much time that's not a lot of time to ask for no it's only you, 60 minutes an hour a week that's one out of every 24 hours 24 times seven hours mm -hmm. in the week that's hundreds of hours mm -hmm. and you're only spending an hour with us we'll get a job that's an hour away and then just do the commute the commute yeah. listen in the car you know um we love you we love you. And um, from uh, Michael Rosenbaum here in the Hollywood Hills of California. I'm Ryan Tays in the Hollywood Hills of California as well. Little wave to the camera, Ryan. Bye. I love you, buddy. You guys have a great day. Thanks for allowing me to be inside of each and every one of you. And I hope you have a glorious freaking week. Do something positive. Help someone out. Do something for yourself. Um, that's all I got to say. Thank you so much.